Hi, and uh, welcome to Kamali's Church YouTube channel. And can I wish you all a very happy new year as you come to view our first offering of the year 2022. We always say this, but it is worth reminding you, if you should require us for anything at all, for a time of prayer, um, for some practical help, uh, or anything of that nature, please get in touch with us, don't hesitate. Now, we're going to enjoy uh, a reflection on God's Word that is offered to us by John Tallach in a short moment. Uh, but before that, I'm going to read uh, from the book of Haggai. So, uh, let's hear the Word of God. We read from Haggai 1, verse 12. To the end of verse 9 in the second chapter. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the twenty-fourth day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. On the twenty-first day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai, Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, ask them, Who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. And work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Amen. And may God bless that reading from his holy word. I would like us to think now about some of the words that we've read together from that passage. That's Haggai chapter 2 and verse 5. My spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Haggai prophesied at a time of great change. And folks at that time needed the encouragement from these words. My spirit remains among you. Do not fear. We also are living at a time of great change with the pandemic and also with structural changes proposed within the Church of Scotland. These things are quite challenging and perhaps we too, especially at the beginning of another year, need the reassurance of these words. My spirit remains among you. Do not fear. I would like us to think first of all about this, that the Jews to whom Haggai was speaking were in the grip of fear. They had come back from exile in 538 BC and one focus in that return from exile was supposed to have been that these Jews would commit to the rebuilding of the temple. Well, they didn't do it. Um, Haggai's prophesying in 520 BC, so that's 18 years after these Jews had returned from exile and they still hadn't um, committed to the rebuilding of the temple. 
he says in uh, chapter 1 and verse 4, Is it time for you yourselves to be living in your panelled houses while this house remains a ruin? This is a wee bit sarcastic because these Jews were saying that the time hadn't arrived yet for them to rebuild the temple. So Haggai is coming down a bit hard on them. They had time to build their own houses, but they hadn't time to spend on the Lord's house. Well, the Jews took on board this criticism and uh, they felt their guilt. It's possible that they actually came to feel somewhat crushed under their guilt because Zechariah, who prophesied at the same time, he says in chapter 3 of his prophecy that he saw Joshua the high priest and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. So perhaps that vision is telling us that these Jews were struggling with a sense of guilt because for 18 years they had neglected God's house. At least the main thing is that now they're focused on doing what they were called to do when they returned from exile. To, to to build the temple again. So we've thought about the fact that the Jews to whom Haggai spoke were crippled or weakened through fear. So we're thinking now about how Haggai brought them encouragement. He says to them, look, God has always been with his church. He says in chapter 2 and verse 4 to 5 that uh, God was with them when they came out of Egypt. He was with them at the Exodus. You remember how God said to Moses, My presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. You remember how God said to Joshua after Moses' death, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. So Haggai is saying to the Jews who are weakened by fear, look, it has always been the way that God has been with his people, whatever their circumstances, whatever their difficulties or discouragements, God has always been there. And now Haggai specifically says, my spirit remains among you. The spirit of God is given to the church to take away fear and to give strength to address the tasks that God calls us to carry out for his glory, for his name. We've recently been celebrating the birth of Christ. We've thought, for example, about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Think of the weakness of her position when she was called to bring into the world the Son of God, our Saviour. Her mind must have been racing as to what folks would say about her as to what the future held for her. But when the angel brought to Mary God's call to be the mother of our Saviour, the last words that the angel spoke were, for with God nothing shall be impossible. He he's drew her eyes away from her inadequacy to the absolute and unlimited adequacy of God's resources. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. That's how the angel encouraged Mary to embrace her calling in faith. So Haggai, he also is encouraging the Jews of his day to look away from their 
lack of resources to the infinite resources of the Almighty. He might have said to them too what the angel said to Mary, with God nothing shall be impossible. My spirit remains among you. Don't fear. The third thing I want to focus on is that this encouragement through the words of Haggai should have an impact on us. We may be anxious or full of fear about what God is calling us to do and we may be deeply conscious of the inadequacy of our resources. But this message from Haggai 2 verse 5 is telling us to look to the unlimited resources of the Almighty and this should have an impact on us. Recently I had an email from a man who is involved to some extent in writing and he's writing an article about a lady who died in Stornoway in 1962 and uh, he was wondering if I had any memories of her to share with him which he could use in this forthcoming article. Well, I left Stornoway in 1960 so it wasn't all that likely I would have any memories of this lady called Vera. But as it happened, I did have a strong memory from one time when I revisited Stornoy after we had left as a family. And a friend took me to the hospital where Vera was being looked after. Now, I didn't know this lady, I didn't know the background, but I just visited her along with a friend as a Christian lady who was in a difficult situation and I stood beside her bed and I prayed with her. I was 17, the, the age that Caitlin is now, I believe. So my memory was working all right in these days and the memory of that visit, the impression of it, has been revived in me by this email from this, this friend, the writer. And that lady had been through a, a difficult and demanding life and she was now coming towards the end of her life. She was in pain, she was in weakness. But my memory of visiting her is not negative. It's not of hassle. It's not of suffering. It's not of, oh, things were difficult. It's that where she was, was full of grace. The situation she was in, the atmosphere that she breathed, was full of grace. She was focused on the God of all grace and the gospel of God's grace. That's the memory I have. And I feel that these experiences are real. They, they, they communicate to us, they witness to us that the promises of God are real. That when God says in Second Corinthians 12, my grace is sufficient for you, he means it. When he says in Philippians chapter 4, My God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He means it. That lady at the end of her life, in my memories of that fellowship with her, is testifying to me. God's promises are true. His spirit does remain among us. We oughtn't to be afraid. This sense of the presence of God with us should take away our debilitating fears. I'm going to refer to Simeon in this connection. He's a figure familiar to us from 
our uh, recollections of the story of Christmas from Christmas time. He went to the temple, he had anxieties, but meeting with Jesus took these anxieties away and brought the peace of God into his heart. Um, I, I am mentioning him because I feel that my experience in Kinmiley's church a fortnight ago was to some extent parallel to the experience of Simeon. That was the day when Scott spoke about some person coming. He Scott had a visual aid of a, of a case and he took articles out of the case like, um, well, there were, there were slippers. Why? There was, the first was a party dress and then there were slippers. And he, he, he said, well, there wasn't a party to receive Jesus. There was no room in the inn. And he wasn't putting his feet up as if he was wearing slippers. He was working hard at the work of our redemption when he came to bear away our sin in his body on the tree. Me in Kinmelis Church that day, I felt that hearing about Jesus in that way was, for me, a meeting with him. And he came in and the fears went out. He came in and the peace of God came in. And I'm applying that in the context of Haggai 2 verse 5. Because who gave us that if the Holy Spirit didn't give it to us? My spirit remains among you. Do not fear. We should take in the full impact of God's encouragement because that's what will make us strong to serve him. Haggai said to the people in his day, Be strong, all you people of the land, and work, for I am with you, de declares the Lord Almighty. That's in chapter 2, verse 4. May these words energize our hearts so that we may have a commitment to the coming of God's kingdom with our whole hearts. As Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being. So may these words be fulfilled in our experience throughout this new year. My Spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Let's pray. Lord, we give thanks that you have cared for your church in all its vulnerability throughout all these years. We give thanks you've brought us to the beginning of this new year and we give thanks for how fresh your promises are to us on this first Sunday of this new year. And so we pray for everyone who's on our hearts, those who are in need, those who are ill, those who are lonely, those who are vulnerable. Cover them all with your covenant commitments through Jesus Christ and through the tender ministry of your Holy Spirit. So be with us now as we commit ourselves again into your care. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.